first I marked the original position just to have a point of reference. This is a seller from eBay where I got the IPR valve tool because it's a um, it's a pain to get out by itself. Looks pretty good quality. So this will go around the IPR valve. Hopefully it'll make it easier to to remove and install. Since I don't have a torque on this yet, I'm gonna mark it just to know I have a point of reference where the IPR valve should be. This is the IPR valve uh, socket. It's got a slot for it for, there it goes. So I highly recommend this socket on eBay for, from Diesel Direct Parts. Definitely worth the $10. Now the Bulletproof uh, kit comes with a with a screen. Oh, this one's been worked on before. It's not the original, but you can see some trash there. Now to get the high pressure oil pump cover off, there's eight eight millimeter bolts around the cover and there's two actually holding it in the rear. One right there and the other one right here. It's on the other side of the that shield that's uh, right there for the downpipe. Bolts are all the same size. This is, I doubt this is supposed to happen. I think there's supposed to be a bolt over here. But since they already worked on it, I'm pretty sure they just didn't bother to put it back. These two bolts definitely are shorter than the other ones. They're about half an inch. Now with that out of the way, the cover should come off. Um, I read out of several places that it's uh, 
important to use, I guess, like a little spatula. Try not to bend it. Apparently, it, I guess it bends real easy. Um, the Haynes manual, the tech book, a bunch of places mention to be careful not to bend the cover plate. Okay, usually I try to get a plastic spatula and then work my way up to a metal one in case the plastic one didn't work. Very careful because this is this is very delicate. Be careful not to drop anything inside, otherwise you are gonna have to go I believe through the through the heads. It's a big mess. Just don't drop anything into that hole. Um, stuff it with rags or towels. Um, just in case you do drop something in there, it it's easier or you have a better chance of recovering it instead of having to disassemble the whole thing. Because you have to get it. There's no other way around it. By lifting the exhaust, you don't need that much, an inch, just to get clearance for that bolt right there from the STC fitting. Size 45 Torx. Forty five with a two inch extension on it. After those uh, 345 torque bolts are out and the STC 8mm bolts are out, the pump should be ready to come out. After the three bolts and the high STC fitting are removed, these two, one here, two here, the pump should be free to come out
make sure nothing falls in there cover it up while you work with the high pressure pump for precautionary purposes I am gonna stuff the hole with paper just so you know debris or bugs whatever don't fall in while I'm working on the pump itself This kit is included in the bulletproof whenever you buy the STC fitting, which it looks like this unit was already done. Still going to replace that and all the gaskets because I already have it, so might as well just get it done. I'm going to try to take it apart with without a vice. I don't want to hit the splines. Clamp the high pressure oil pump to a vise. Um, I try to put some old pans or something to keep it from scratching it or damaging the, the edges on the pump. The STC kit comes with the STC new fitting, the one that's fixed. An adjustment or actually like a guide with the three nylon bolts. Your gasket, gasket for the high uh, pressure oil pump on the top and the two gaskets that go on the engine itself. Bolts, a rebuild kit for your uh, IPR. This bolt I think goes on the top of the high pressure oil pump. This gasket is for your oil supply for the uh, turbo and the bolts. The STC has a gasket and a little swivel or uh, washer that has some play to it. Um, it's been said to screw it in from five to seven full revolutions. The important thing is for this gasket to be inside the machined part of the of the high pressure oil pump and then torque this one to I believe is 49 foot pounds You want the STC fitting to fit flush with this and you don't want it over rotated to where the you know there's a gap between the guide. Just want it to fit like that. Perfect. And then start tightening the nut down. 
and try to get 49 foot pounds. It's seated pretty good. As far as a torque, the best I could do was get a wrench, put it more or less to the space, and grab the torque wrench, and then just kind of get a feel for it and apply it right there. Since uh, I try to get a crow's foot. But it would have to be special ordered and uh, too much of a hassle, so that's pretty close to where it's supposed to be. This uh, gasket is supposed to be inside the truck, but it, it was pretty tight in there. Whoever worked on it before, I don't think they followed the torque specs because it was really really tight all the old gaskets clean it up a bit This is a part that I don't know if I should replace. I believe it. It's got to be that part. I just don't know the torque specs on it. But it does seem to have a little gasket that might be um, leaking. For right now, I'll leave it there. Anyways, this is exposed. You know, it's just a matter of getting in there and replacing it if I need to replace it later on it, it the cover is going to go right here and it's exposed it'll be under the turbo if anything I might have to remove the turbo next is replace the gasket notice the tab is right there Now the gasket has this little tab right here and I believe that goes to the bottom over here because one one side of the gasket, I don't know if you can see it, one, one side of the gasket is uh, pointy which I guess goes towards the engine block and this is a flat mating surface. So I believe that's why that tab is right there, so it'll make it foolproof. And basically just tap it down. And there's no need to run your fingers along like that. That'll stretch out the gasket. Kind of grabs on the inside. 
once you compress the, the gasket you can see it it actually goes in quite a bit just leaves that little apex out Got a gasket and the backing ring. To clean out, you just get a bolt and make sure it's clean. You're going to push it in and blow out the holes just to see if there's any trash left behind you can hear where it opens finish removing the last o-ring Make sure that you see all the way and make sure they're not rolled on. Once you got it down, <coughs> you can put the screen on. Finally, you put the, the O-ring and go see it at the very back. And the IPR valve will be bolted to the high pressure oil pump to uh, 50 Newton meters or 37 foot pounds. Okay, we're about to install the high pressure oil pump, the IPR, into the engine mount. In this case it did not happen usually the high pressure oil rail that goes back there if it snaps off if the STC fails it usually hits that back wall back there um, causing either dents at best or cracks running down the back wall you don't want to put any pressure it's very delicate it looks like aluminum cast or something um, if anything you just want to put maybe a, a screwdriver or a quarter inch extension on the hole and try to bend it back into place right now we'll set the pump in place
If you can, try to visually verify that the gears have actually seated, have made it right. Careful not to drop anything into the engine. Oh, these are a little bit off to one side, it's not really straight. Bulletproof Diesel recommends a webpage where they give you all these specs. Um, those specs for the three mounting bolts say they should go at 23 foot pounds. There is no order to it. Um, other sources say 25. So I'm sticking somewhere in between at 24. I remember you don't want to drop any of this down, so just be very careful. Okay, quick rundown of how this high pressure oil pump works, or I think it works. It's getting fed oil, the pump, run by the, the pulley in the back, that uh, gear, which is connected right uh, to the crankshaft itself, I think. Um, supplies the oil, pressurizes it up to like a couple of thousand PSI in that STC connector, down to the branch tubes which go to each side and uh, they're the ones that supply the the other faulty part which is a standpipe rail which feeds the the oil rails up here in the valve heads um, that being said one of the sources which is a, the website says that those bolts have to be torqued to 8 foot pounds Another source says uh, 125 inch pounds, which is equivalent to about 10 and a half, 10.4, somewhere around there. So I am going again somewhere in the middle and I am just going to torque it to nine foot pounds. done all that's left is to put the cover some people claim you know I had the advantage that I had to take everything down so I just took care of this some people cut this one off this little tab which prevents it from uh, actually uh, getting in the way whenever you uh, unbolt all this stuff and you know work on it with your uh, with your intake and your EGR still in place um, I, I'm going to leave it as is and, uh, hopefully it'll, you know, I won't need to do this again. Real quick, uh, get a form of gasket or some sort of sealant on, um, uh, on the rear plate of the vehicle right here where the that um, aluminum and the cast iron meat Just put a glob of it
It's kind of like a Chinese puzzle. Final step would be to connect the heat shield to the cover of the high pressure oil pump. I'm going to use a small quarter inch ratchet with an eighth, eight millimeter. If anybody knows of an easier way, I'm all open for suggestions it looks like you can get to it from the bottom of the truck finally once the cover is installed you can install the IPR valve and it should be torqued at 37 foot-pounds or 50 newton meters okay we're getting closer to installing the oil cooling system However, to install the oil cooler radiator, I'm gonna have to remove all this. And it also requires you to remove the AC condenser as per the instructions on the bulletproof method. I was hoping to have some time to actually maybe squeeze it in there without having to drain it. Um, but it's just prolonging everything. I went to the local uh, auto zone and was able to rent out the, the vacuum pump with the gauges. They seem to be pretty new. Um, for less than, I, I believe it was 308, which is fully refundable after I return everything back. You can see the, there's no, very little if any oil inside. Right here, um, You'll see there's a sticker where it says AC and the refrigerant is R134A. This is the first time I dabble with anything with AC related. So the thing is, uh, gonna have to make sure these are closed right now. Hook them up to the ports. Just one right here. And the other one, I believe, is that one right there. Hook them up with the quick connects, the low and the high, and then let the pump run for about half an hour at least to drain the whole system. Okay, these have like a quick connect type deal. Just pull back, insert, and then um, make sure it's completely open or completely counterclockwise because that pin in there will actually bend the other pin that's inside right there if you don't um if you're not careful with it uh the blue is the low side which is the smaller diameter hose like that right there and the red is the high. Make sure it's all the way open, all right. Okay. 
and start opening it. You could hear where the gas actually went in. And you can see the pressure rise. Hot. Now the low pressure. You could hear where it, where the gas goes in. There it goes. Now. Okay. After about half an hour, close the, your gauges. Take a note of the reading, should be somewhere around 25 pounds of mercury of vacuum. And that one should be bottomed out. Turn off the pump. And let it sit there for another 30 minutes to see if uh, you have a leak while you're at it on your system. Okay, it's been about 40 minutes and the needles seem to be in the same place. Um, so that means there is no leak or very little leak so then just close it by counterclockwise that way they stop pressing on the pin So now that our system has been evacuated, it's time to tear down the bumper, this cover right here, to get to the condenser and start installing our air to oil cooler. Air pipes and dummy plugs. about 120 from Sinister Diesel. These dummy plugs have a Teflon washer. However, I noticed it has like a little crack in it. I don't know if that's normal. Both sides have it, so maybe it is. Um, I don't know if you can tell from the camera angle. Um, the proper size of, a, of this Allen is um, actually a 12 millimeter. I don't have a 12 millimeter Allen, but I did find this uh, bunch that I had. It's actually uh, like 11 and a half, and it's pretty good. Now we can use either a socket or a 12 millimeter wrench and tighten it up. So I guess I'll cut it somewhere around right here. Just to make a makeshift Allen key. To gain access to the air condenser we remove the cover this is the air condenser right here followed by the transmission oil cooler which uh, bulletproof sells a, a kit to actually uh, lower the, the cooler down since that's where the oil cooler is going to sit um, I, I'm not going to show that on this video because I ran out of money it's just not possible for, for me to, to do it right now so I'll probably have to weld something up or come up with some sort of re um, you're going to have to take the the hood latch off, so just make sure to mark it to, so you can place it back the way it was. Okay, now that the AC condenser is moved, it exposes the 
transmission radiator and since this is a 450 I actually expected a heavy duty radio oil cooler but it, it it's actually just 14 inches so it'll be perfect I guess I looked out some of them have 17 inch I don't know if they're aftermarket or or if they're from a factory but if it was 17 inches you would have to lower the that cooler by like two inches it include it's included in the in the kit as far as the the mounting brackets for it for right now we're gonna remove this um, I believe it's for the power steering cooler which I mistakenly said it was a transmission I believe I don't know this heat's getting to me Okay, some of the things that are included in the kit. These are the brackets that are used to lower that um, transmission cooler. These are the, the rivets that you would use to lower it, to bolt these onto the transmission cooler. These, I'm assuming they're for uh, the oil, where the oil filter used to sit. I think you're gonna replace them with these. These are the bolts I will be using right now to install our oil cooler to the uh, to the AC condenser. This is a plug that you'll need uh, on your oil cooler. It'll be used uh, unless you're using that port for a pressure gauge or an oil temperature gauge. Uh, otherwise, just it'll be used to plug up that hole. And these. I believe we'll find out what they're for. Can't think of anything off the top of my head right now. Probably to bolt on the 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 cooler. And these are the fittings that will go to your hoses. And this is a piece of hose that will actually connect the uh, the bulletproof uh, EGR cooler to uh, to the oil where the oil cooler used to sit, which is now the oil distributor, I believe comes with a your bracket where where the oil filter is gonna sit that's really nice and the bracket that will mount onto your condenser with the oil cooler on top there are some other things in, uh, included uh, for example the, the intake uh, gaskets uh, EGR cooler gaskets, uh, filter, other little goodies that were included in the kit. So now for the assembly of the oil cooler onto the condenser. Okay, now remember, this is the bug cemetery, so this, is go this goes to the front of the truck. Um, try to clean it as much as possible without damaging it. I'm using a very soft bristle brush to get rid of all the bug skeletons that are left behind. Because remember that the, the air actually has to find a way through this to actually get to the air cooler because it'll be sitting right behind especially in this top portion of the of the condenser so it is imperative that that part gets cleaned up and straightened out as much as possible um, to let the air do its work and make the air cool the oil cooler perform the way it's supposed to okay once we cleaned out most of the bug remains and uh, all those uh, rock dents um, we can start installing the oil cooler which will be on the other side of this Remember, air has to go through this condenser before it hits your oil cooler. So just you know, try to make 
Staying up against, if possible. On the outlet side of the cooler, there's two holes. One's for the main hole that's going to feed it back to the to the oil distributor, and the other one's for this plug. It could be used for a um, for a type of uh, oil pressure sensor or oil temperature gauge. Be sure to put some Teflon on this thing. Also, this is a brass fitting, so you don't want to go all crazy on it. You know, just just make sure it's it fits snug. I think it takes a six millimeter Allen wrench. You see, I'm feeling a little bit of resistance right there, so maybe right there. Worst case scenario, if I see it leaking, I'll just, you know, tighten it up a bit more. But you don't want to break the, the stud or the threads. Probably aluminum, so real uh, delicate material. Okay, to connect the oil cooler to the main hose, you need to take the bracket. This is the top part. It has the studs that are supposed to go flush, flushly mounted with the top of the condenser, I believe. So this goes up. Basically, it's going to be like this. That's the front of the truck. This is, of course, the engine inside. So your cooler will be mounted like this. That's going to be its position. On the top, on the driver's side, you want the top port, which is the oil out. You need for the filters to go on the Four black washers. facing from the engine side. That's going to be facing towards the grill. Out, in. And it's just basically so that it can start filling up and all the air will escape. There's no, there's less of a chance of air getting trapped in here by filling it through this side and spelling it through this side. Note the positions or the type of uh, screws are that are going to go in on the on the outlet side it's straight on the inlet side it's a 90 degree down also the illustration shows that it's supposed to have like a little cutaway on the top so I didn't have to use that uh, little gear wrench but as you can tell it it doesn't really have it anymore I guess that was an old picture or something so the straight one's gonna go down here and the 90 degree going down on the other side Notice it has a gasket, so I'll, I don't think it needs any Teflon. It doesn't say anything about needing Teflon. Hmm. Again, you go with the uh, one that has a the rubber gasket on it. Right now I'm just hand tightening everything to assemble. Okay, we got the condenser in place. This is an AC uh, inlet line. Uh, we already cleaned it out. This is the inside, but the side going to inside the engine bay. The other side is full of bugs, or used to be full of bugs. Uh, but I'm not worried about any leaks or anything because even when we took the lines off, I believe there was a sound of a, of the vacuum still 
in place. All right. Okay, now according to the uh, bulletproof manual, these tabs are supposed to align and there's holes along the side of the condenser that'll allow these, uh, well it, it illustrates only four bolts, but they actually provide you with, with uh, six of them. So that's actually better. Uh, the holes kind of do align on my truck, on yours might be even better. You're gonna try to get them on these like little uh, eighth inch holes not on the big ones i think that's too big it more or less lines up it's a little bit off maybe about an eighth of an inch so i'm going to see if i can squeeze it in there otherwise you would have to drill a hole on on these uh and i, I really wouldn't want to drill a hole on it i think it it'll do so we'll learn from my mistake if it doesn't fit Okay, the bolts provided are a 5 16 It is very important for you to fit these spacers between the bracket and the condenser itself. I'm assuming it has to do something with the airflow to your, uh, to your oil cooler. Now this is all aluminum so it doesn't take much. So you're gonna drill on it. Be very careful. You don't wanna bust one of these little lines. And starting to hold it might be a little bit tough. But again it's it's aluminum so it'll it'll give way. And once you bust through it. A lot more simple. You, see, you don't want to over tighten them and ruin the the hole. Might have seen that one a little bit crooked, but I don't want to hit these little elbow macaroni deals because I don't, you know, if there's no leak, I don't want to bother with having a new leak. plugs and in and out basically that's there's two short ones and a long one the short ones go and the threaded area will go in here This has a kind of like the snap to connect where you you screw it in and then, then you torque it up with with the free uh, nut. If you don't have a Allen wrench that's like a 916 I believe just use a a bolt, I think it's a, I believe it's a 3 8 that has a 916 head on it and use that as a and you plug one side of each and 
make sure you don't plug out both oil outs that could be pretty bad so oil out line is going to go to your intake on your uh, oil cooler the oil in is coming hot from the engine from your driver's side so i still need to torque that one down torque everything down because once it's in place it's going to be really tough to to tighten things up I'm going to pivot it a little bit towards the inside I don't want to have problems with the bumper later on it might be chafing a line or something Okay, one thing that the manual doesn't really explain that well is that which hose is which hose. It just says one, two, and three. It doesn't really explain. Um, hose one would be the one that has a 90 degree bend on it. Hose two is the smaller one, that the one that's going to go from your uh, oil filter out to to your actual cooler this is going to supply yep. from the oil transfer block down under to your uh, oil filter in and hose 3 is the one that has the two straight um, connections this is going to go on your passenger side from the oil cooler out to your uh, transfer block. I'm going to pre-assemble these onto the oil cooler itself before installing it. Okay, I'm going to install hose 2 and 3. The straight one being 3 is going to go on the passenger side. Now is also a good time to tighten up. Once it's bending, it's going to be very tight, very hard to, to tighten these connections. It doesn't really give a torque spec as far as how, how much, but I think that's what should... Right now it's just sitting on the grill. Things get really hot around here. So you need gloves. I'm gonna have to remove the power steering lines for now. Okay, I'm going to cut the power steering cooling lines.
be sure it sits on inside the rubber jacket. They call out, make sure you put it back on. For example, this side. We'll connect the AC lines, but we won't charge it up till we run the truck just to make sure there's no leaks. That way we won't have to evacuate the system again. Okay, to install the oil filter assembly. You can tell the hose is already looped in through here. This is the one that goes directly to the oil cooler. Um, those two bolts have to be taken out uh, to remove that bracket. Um, they're size 18 uh, bolts. So let's, uh, let's get to it.